Randy Weingarten, uh, the teachers' union chief, Randy Weingarten claims an eighth grade teacher read the diary of Anne Frank to her students and she was fired for it. Nicholas Giordano is the political science professor at Suffolk Community College and joins me now. All right, Nicholas, it's your job to tell me what really happened with this teacher. Well, it's perfect timing because my son is in eighth grade and I just got him Diary of Anne Frank two weeks ago to read because I think it's an important story to yes. hear about the horrors of the Holocaust as well as see it through the prism of Anne Frank. This was a graphic adaptation of Anne Frank's diary oh. and that's where it becomes a problem. When we look at it, the illustrations take away from the content. It weakens and cheapens Anne Frank. And, and these are eighth graders. They don't need a picture book to help them along. They're not in first or second grade. They should be reading the content and using their brains to visualize what took place because that helps them to critically think. This whole controversy could have been avoided simply by using common sense. Why select the Diary of Anne Frank, a graphic adaptation, as opposed to the standard and Diary of Anne Frank that most eighth graders will read. But Randy Weingarten distorted the story by simply saying the Diary of Anne Frank she read it in class, she was fired. That completely distorts the story. Absolutely, and she's doing that on purpose to make it as if there's really book bans going on where they're trying to redefine what the word ban means. I mean, listen, all they had to do was pull this book from the students and just give them the regular Anne Frank book that we all read in eighth grade, and the problem would have been resolved. But and Randy Weingarten is trying to elevate it to a bigger issue because they're fighting hard for all these books, the, the, this content that shouldn't be taught to children as the education system's collapsing. And that's the crazy part. You know, at Campus Reform, we've been reporting that our education system is in a lot of trouble. Students are behind where they should be. Uh, Logo Dubo just wrote a report for us where students can't write anymore. They can't critically think. 77% of, of Americans can't name more than one freedom in our First Amendment. And Randy Weingarten wants to focus on this hmm. as she destroyed the education system through the two-year shutdown with COVID. I'm sure you saw this. I, I need your comment. Republican Senator John Kennedy read from several explicit books that he'd found inside public school libraries. One of the author of one of those books is responding. The author of the book Gender Queer said, and I'm quoting now, Gender Queer is a comic and in full color, but that doesn't mean it's for children. I originally wrote it for my parents and then for older teens who were already a uh, asking these questions about themselves. I do not recommend this book for kids. Even the author says it's not for kids, but it was in public school libraries. Parents have it so difficult today because our children are being inundated with explicit material day in, day out. That's totally inappropriate. I mean, you know, there's a book called Long Boy where you have fourth graders, 10 year olds, uh, providing oral sex to each other. It is sick and disturbing. And they was, that found in it in public was that in a school library? Absolutely. It's been in public school libraries and parents have complained and got them taken off the shelves. The amazing part is that when parents show up to school board meetings reading some of this material, the school board shuts them down saying you can't read that here. It's totally inappropriate. But we're going to pretend it's OK for children to read these books. Yeah. You come read these passages on air. That's and how explicit. And then the parents are branded as book banners. Correct. Which is not a good thing. And, and they're redefining the term ban. Yeah. What do you got? Even in classes that teach sexual education, you often have the option to opt your child out, which many parents do. But it was brought to my attention. What's the point? Because the kids who aren't opted out just tell your kids who were opted out about it anyway. So I, I, you can't get around it. I could see sex education as being something that might be OK in the schools. I mean, I can understand that. But the modern stuff about it gets trans. Into, well, that's what it gets into. That, that's my point. Oh, if it it's gets the into modern that, yeah. stuff. So many parents are opting out. But the, the, the parents of the children who didn't opt out are saying, it's not even worth it because they're all is, talking about it anyway after school. Is there any sense. need to teach or even promote uh, transgender stuff in schools? Well, and especially as they make it really e explicit. I mean, you would blush if you actually read some of these passages. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Our education system has collapsed. And, and we should be focusing on that. We should be outraged on that. These are our, the future leaders of this country, and they're getting shortchanged. Yet you have people like Randy Weingarten saying that it's all about book bans, and we're just trying to, you know, get rid of books in the public school libraries. Where no, it's about inappropriateness. Nicholas, good stuff. Thank you very much. And I've got another story on similar lines here. The Heritage Foundation found that uh, Virginia, 
leads the nation in having the largest DEI bureaucracy in public universities. University of Virginia, George Mason University, Virginia Tech had more DEI bureaucrats than deep blue states wow. like California and New York. And this one's for you. Mm. You've got so we, you you found you got this stunning find, findings on Baltimore schools. Tell me, it's depressing. Thirty-three high schools in Baltimore administered the state math exam in the spring. In thirteen of those thirty-three, not one student tested proficient in math. Not one. And if you look at the five best schools in Baltimore City, only eleven percent tested proficient. Eleven percent. I mean, so. What are they doing with the record funding that they're getting? They got 1.6 billion from taxpayers last well, year. Baltimore City School, mm -hmm. 1.6 billion. Yep. Just for Baltimore City Schools. Correct. Not including COVID taxpayer. money. Yes. There needs to be accountability on this. <laughs> you really can't does. excuse right, those Nicholas? test scores. Yes. Well, they spend twenty-five thousand dollars per student in Baltimore. Twenty-five thousand taxpayer How dollars per student to New York? per year. New York is at twenty-five thousand on the state level, thirty-nine thousand in the city level. 39,000 on the city level? Yep. 30, per student? Per student per year. In New York City? In New York City. That's astronomical. Really? Wow. What, what, I think we've got another one here. Mississippi's auditor is calling.